Meanwhile, President Trump continues to tweet, taking his message directly to the people, especially that 6.35 a.m. tweet on Saturday morning. Boy, that put the can amongst the pigeons. Media Buzz host Howard Kurtz is with us now. All right, Howard, welcome back. Thanks, sir. Does the President of the United States have any establishment media defenders at this point? Establishment, not so much. Uh, he certainly has uh, some of the newer conservative websites like Breitbart, obviously, and the Daily Caller, some voices in talk radio like Laura Ingram and uh, Mark Levin, again, obviously, and some people on Fox, uh, Lou Dobbs and Sean Hannity defend him. But look, when it comes to the establishment media, um, there's a very negative tone. But president created some problems for himself with that 6:35 a.m. tweet because a lot, even Republicans going on shows this weekend said they don't have any proof about wiretapping by the Obama administration. It's the tone that it sounds almost angry, as if the president has lost his temper. He's fed up with these leaks that uh, said goodbye to General Flynn, and which had to uh, Attorney General was uh, recused himself. It seems like he lost his temper. That's what gets to a lot of people now. Do you think I'm right that he lost his temper and tweeted as soon as he got out of bed on Saturday morning? Well, he was widely reported to be uh, upset and even angry on Friday about the way in which the whole Jeff Sessions recusal contacts with Russia story kind of stepped on the one good 24-hour period he had, which was his well-received speech to Congress, and I can understand that. At the same time, um, you look at the coverage, and this is a very leaky White House. So just in the last 24 hours, Stuart, I've read pieces about uh, Reince Priebus is under fire, uh, president's mad at his staff, the staff is feeling it's hard to defend him on this wire tapping charge since they, they, he hasn't given them anything to work with. Uh, so obviously the media not that well disposed toward this president to begin with are going to take that kind of stuff and run with it. But we do know uh, the upshot of that tweet at 6.35 Saturday morning, the upshot is we do know that Trump Tower was bugged. And we do know that president, I, I, we do know that, don't we? Uh, we don't know that for a fact. I haven't seen evidence for a fact. We do um, know that there were some reports about an FBI investigation and seeking a warrant from the FISA National Security right. Court. But it's kind of murky right now. And here's the problem for the Trump administration. Leave aside the speech to Congress. Today, rolling out the revised immigration travel ban. Uh, later this week, Republicans want to roll out the, their plans to repeal and replace Obamacare. That'll get a lot of coverage, but to some extent, and the president set this in motion, it's going to be competing with, if not overshadowed by, all of these stories about wiretapping. It's the leaks. You can't, if you can't control the leaks, it's very difficult to get on with the business of running the country, because you've always got this stab in the back from your own bureaucrats. Yes, well, every president faces leaks and it drives them all crazy. But in this president in particular is getting a lot of very damaging leaks about sensitive and sometimes classified national security information, even involving his calls with foreign leaders, yeah. uh, many of them probably coming from Obama holdovers. And that, I think, is making President Trump very upset. And on that, he has an undeniable strong point. I say this to almost all of our regular guests. We've never seen anything like this before. I'll say it again to you, Howard. No argument you... from me. There you go. <laughs> Howard, thanks very much for being with us, as always, sir. Thank Good you. Good to see you. All right.